Hello everyone. Thank you for watching Edupedia World videos. We will now start with SAP Finance and Controlling Overview. As per this training, the expectations would be that at the end of this course, you as a participant would understand the SAP Finance concept and the processes and this would mainly cover SAP FICO module overview, SAP FICO functionality and the integration with other modules, and SAP organization structure. And you will also understand how to do finance transactions in SAP system as we go through a demo. Please do expect that this video will be divided into various parts so that we do not have one long video for the same topic. Let's start with the finance overview. And, and within that, let's see the finance integration concept. So as we discussed earlier, SAP finance and SAP controlling are two different modules which within SAP R3. When it comes to external financial reporting, it is produced by SAP Finance, whereas when it comes to internal reporting, it is produced by SAP Controlling Component. SAP Finance and SAP Controlling go hand in hand, and that is a very important integration aspect within SAP. Within financial accounting, we have topics like general ledger, accounts payable, accounts receivable, cash management, and asset management, which is also called fixed asset management. Whereas in controlling module, which is also called management accounting module, we have concepts like cost center accounting, cost element accounting, profit center accounting, internal orders, profitability analysis, and we also have something called project systems under which we have workbench structures, which is WBS, fund management and budgeting. We will cover these topics in detail going forward. Specifically looking at SAP finance, what is financial accounting? This is a module in SAP which is used to support financial statutory reporting of legal entities. And what is the FI module used for? It is mainly used for reporting a company's financial position and activity to statutory bodies and other external parties. And the external parties can be the stakeholders or shareholders. For example, if you must have seen an annual report of a company, then you will see that it covers the company balance sheet, company profit and loss statement, and various tax related items as a part of it. This kind of reporting is generated from SAP Finance module. Within the SAP Finance module, we have various sub modules. As we saw earlier, there is accounts payable, and on the right side, you have accounts receivable. On the top, you have asset accounting. And over here, you have bank accounting. All of these different sub modules flow into general ledger, which is one common place where all the financial figures are recorded. And that gives you the final balance sheet or profit and loss which is then as it put up as a part of a company annual report. But SAP Finance it no, is not just a module which is only developed from the figures within. The figures come also from external modules like materials management module, which is also called procurement. And it is also deriving data from the sales module. It's also called sales and distribution. 
So data from different kind of modules is gathered and captured together within the finance module and then finally the reports are created. What does the SAP Finance organization structure look like? We will again look into this in detail in our demo, but just for an overview, we first have the operating concern at the top. Usually, there will be just one operating concern in an organization. Under that, we will have the controlling area and also the chart of accounts. There may or may not be multiple chart of accounts within an organization. This has to be decided during implementation between the implementation team and the organization's finance department. Different chart of accounts can be used to report on a global level and separately on a local level. Then the third layer comes as a company code. There can be various company codes within an operating concern. Usually you will notice that company codes are divided on the basis of the location or the kind of business which is done by the company. And then we have the next level as profit centers and cost centers. These are also a part of the SAP's organization structure within finance and controlling. Profit centers and cost centers are a key item because they record where all the costs are allocated within a company. To highlight one point over here, as we mentioned earlier, company codes can be multiple and they can be dependent on either the type of business or the type of location. That is completely what an organization has to decide when they implement SAP. There is no thumb rule and there is no such rule written in any of the SAP training materials that there has to be an X number of company codes. There can be any number of company codes. And it is also possible that one chart of account is used by three company codes, as you see in this example, whereas the other chart of account is used by another company code. And we will look into these details during the demo session. Going forward, this is how the SAP organization structure looks like also from a CEO point of view wherein you don't just have the controlling area and the company code, but you also have the cost center hierarchy and the fund structure. The fund center structure will give you details like within which category are the expenses to be segregated. You will have different fund center structure for finance, for operations, for support, etc. And now let's look into the SAP controlling module. So we saw that SAP finance is used for external reporting purposes. But what is controlling? Controlling is a tool used by the management within a company to explain the questions like what have we spent the money on? Where have we spent the money? Where does the money come from? and what are we making the money on in the area of accountability. So you will see that controlling is more about internal reporting. It's used by the management of a company. The organization structure in controlling represents the organization within the company and the cost flow throughout the organization. Similar to SAP Finance, SAP Controlling also has sub-modules within them. For example, within SAP Controlling, we have Profitability Analysis. This is a very important module as it gives you a very clear picture of the internal management reporting structure of the company. The next one is Overhead Cost Controlling on the left side. 
which covers call centers, activity types, internal orders, and process orders. On the right, you will see there is product cost controlling. And this is also an important module because it covers mainly your sales order projects, your warehouse production, your material valuation, etc. And then we have cost element accounting. And we will look into detail what exactly are cost elements in the next slides. And as you see, CO does not work only on its own. CO has to go hand in hand with FI. FI and CO together will give you the perfect reporting which is needed for a company. And all the data within FI and CO flows from external modules like human resources, materials management, production planning, sales and distribution, and so on and so forth. What are the major differences between financial accounting and controlling? As we saw earlier, financial accounting is all about external accounting and external reporting, whereas controlling is more for internal accounting for management purposes. Financial accounting is a statutory requirement, whereas controlling, which is internal accounting, is not statutory and you do not have to publish this to your shareholders. Financial accounting covers tax reporting and filing of corporate accounts whereas on the other hand controlling covers your profitability statistics and it also measures your internal efficiency in the company for example here is a very clear order to cash example which shows you how your data flows from SAP sales and distribution module to the SAP finance module. You first always request for a quotation and you provide a quotation. And once this quotation is accepted, you process the order, the sales order from your company. Once the goods go out, your customer receives the goods, then invoicing takes place. The invoice is sent to the customer along with the goods either by email or with the goods physically. And then the customer will make a payment. They can make the payment either via automatic direct debits or they can make payments via checks. There are various methods to make payments. And finally, there is a dunning process that is basically a reminder process sent to the customer if they have delayed in their payments. So mainly, this is how you see how the sales figures are captured in SAP Finance and how something which is like a product converts into figures for reporting purposes. We will cover general ledger and other topics in the next video. Thank you very much for watching Edupedia World videos.